What's up? I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of Brendan'sAdventures.com, and I got my hands on the latest copy of Photoshop Elements PS13. So today I'm going to do a hands on review, and I'm also going to be giving away a couple copies to you, the viewer, the reader. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's jump right into Photoshop Elements 13. I thought it would be cool if I took you through a bit of a walkthrough of the new things, the upgrades, um, the new tools that you can find in the latest version of Photoshop Elements 13. I'll let you know my thoughts on it as we go through. And then at the end, remember that there's a contest I'm gonna be giving away a couple copies of PSE 13. So stay tuned to the end of the video for that if you want a free copy. Let's get into it. So this is, uh, this is the organizer. This is ground zero for a Photoshop Elements, as you know. And there's a couple significant changes to the way it's laid out now. Um, we have this cool tool called eLive over here. And eLive is uh, basically just inspiration, I guess, in many ways, or some, some tools as well. So you've got like a guide for using Photoshop Elements 13. Um, you've got some like tips and tricks and probably videos and articles like this one will appear in here. So you've got it laid out in everything or you can go up here and choose learn if you want to. Some learning tools. You can do uh, inspire if you want some inspiration on things to do, five fun photo ideas, stuff like that. You've also got the, the Photoshop Elements, Facebook, Twitter, and their help desk all right here so you don't need to jump around. It's really cool. I think if you're looking for some inspiration or some creative ideas, that's a good spot to go. Um, you've got your media window as usual, and then you've got people over here if you want to organize via people, or you've got your places, which is a new thing, which is really cool. So if your photos are geotagged, if they're GPS tagged, you can go right into um, the map and find exactly where your photos were taken. Since I use a Canon 60D, I don't have that feature, but I can also tag them, or there's different apps you can use for like your iPhone that will help you tag your images via GPS so that they'll show up on here um, when you go through that, and I think that's really cool. And then, of course, you've got events as well, so you can organize via dates, via months. You can organize via specific events, which is cool if you're like a wedding photographer or something like that. For me, it's probably less significant, but I can definitely see the use. Um, over in Create, there's a new, uh, there's a, a couple changes that have been made, but I'm not going to get into that sort of stuff because, as you know, I'm not a big photo project guy, but there is some cool stuff like a Facebook cover you can do, um, you can do photo books and collages and calendars and it's really upgraded. So if you're into those photo projects, I've gone through it all and it's really, really, really easy to do now. It's really set up very well to make things as easy as possible. Um, okay, so let's jump into some, some stuff here, some fun stuff. And I don't know why my images aren't showing up. There we go. Um, so. Well, let's go into the editor and see what we can do. Um, let's just take this image because it's the one my mouse was on <laughs> and go into the Photoshop Elements Editor. And as you know, if you're in the organizer, you just right click and then go edit with Elements Editor. And then so now we're in the editor. And again, in the editor, you have eLive here as well. You've got your quick, your guided, and your expert edit, as was the case in PSE12. So let's go through some of the quick stuff you can do. And one of the biggest adjustments they made to the quick is now, um, in the past you always had these effects here. There's 10 effects, quick effects that you could add onto your images. Basically, they made those, um, they expanded those. So there's five new versions, or four new versions to each of them. So for example, it used to just be Seasons or Pencil Sketch. Now, if you click on Seasons, you'll get an extra four of them. So now there's 50 in total rather than just the 40 you had before. And like all the quick edits, it's very simple. You just click on the one you want and it will apply everything, do all the work for you. And voila, we've got our edited image with the effect, which is cool if you're that Instagram user or if you're into doing these kind of um, specific photo projects that you're looking for a specific look or edit, you can do it all right there in the quick edit, which is cool. Um, now, there's also another tool that I find really good and 
If you follow this channel, you know how annoyed I get with really bad cropping and really bad photo composition. Um, so this basically tries to help people out with that. This is crop suggestions. So when you go into the crop, it now offers you different crop suggestions. You can go, I want to make this into a 16 um, by 9 image. And it'll give you these various crop so, um, selections, suggestions, based on um, the rules of photography, such as the rule of two-thirds, the rule of symmetry, and things like that. So I think it's a brilliant idea, and I think it's really, really good. And if you're not good with the photo composition or knowing how to crop your images, it's cool to take it through this um, suggestion tool because you can just kind of like go through the various modes and see some suggestions and try to decide um, what looks cool. Or you might just get like an idea for something that you never thought of before. Um, personally, I'm pretty good at cropping, I think. So it's not something I would use a lot. But if I was a new photographer, or a young photographer, or just starting out, or I was having really a lot of trouble with a certain image and getting it to look the way I wanted to, I might run it through this tool. It's cool for that. Um, um, next up, oh yeah, we've got some really cool stuff in the guided edits. I'm gonna get out of this image. Um, and I'll take you to the guided edits where there's a lot of fun stuff for black and white. So I think, um, Let's use this image to start. Um, yeah, so there's three new edits, um, black and white style. Of course, black and white is always a popular, um, a popular edit for people. And in the past, there wasn't a really great black and white edit. So they've not just put in one, but they put in three different black and white edits. So you've got your simple black and white here. And again, it's a guided edit, not a quick edit. So it'll guide you through it rather than just doing it all for you. And you've got these options, light, lighter, dark, darker. So if I wanted to go dark, and then you can scroll down, you can add diffuse glow if you want um, to it. And I'm sorry, my computer's just a touch slower this morning because I've got been working it so hard. So if you wanted to add some diffuse glow to it, diffuse glow, you can do that. And then of course, if you don't like what you just did, you can always, <coughs> excuse me, you can always hit undo or Control-Z does the same thing, Command-Z on, uh, on Max. And yeah, so very, very simple. You can increase the con uh, contrast. You can just keep doing that as much as you want until you get an image the way you want it. So that's a really cool, very simple black and white edit in Photoshop Elements 13 that I'm a big fan of. Um, let's go out of this one and take a different one for the next one, which is the black and white selection. Um, and let's use this image here that I took in Cote d'Ivoire. This was in a village up in Cote d'Ivoire somewhere. And basically black and white selection is those images like you see up here where you just choose a part of the image you want to be in color and everything else in black and white. And it's done really simply. You take your black and white selection brush and you choose your brush size. It's a very smart brush so you don't have to be too, oh, I, mean, I did backwards. Okay, control Z, I wanna black and white the background. So you can black and white out the background. Obviously it's, it's caught some of his body as well here. Now the beauty of this is that you can just go straight into this and, and edit out the select, um, subtract out the color spots that kind of messed up a little bit, but it is really smart. So you really don't have to spend that much work on it. And if I wanted to get into more detail, I could always zoom in up here and, and do all that stuff. You can also refine the edge. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to do it quickly. So done. We've got our black and white background with the color in the foreground. And I, and I just realized I messed up his foot here. But obviously, it would be a quick fix otherwise. Um, and so that's a cool tool. That's something that's been very popular in terms of photography these days is making a color selection. Um, and so I think that'll be very, very popular. Uh, we've also got, um, again, let's go out of this image and use a different one. Let's use this image from Guinea. And now the other tool that we have available is called the color pop and the black and white color pop is exactly what you think. It is popping one specific color and basically muting out everything else. So if you've ever seen those images, where only red items in the photo are still color, everything else is black and white and wondered how to do it. 
You don't have to know how to do it anymore because you can just do it directly in Photoshop Elements a very quick way. So we're going to go up to Color Pop and then we choose a color here or you can choose a select um, a custom color and a custom color you just hit this and then you pick one from the image so let's go blue and then it's basically going to flip everything out of the image except for that blue from that t-shirt which is awesome I think that's a really really cool tool I think that's going to be extremely popular for a lot of people that tool that change might be the reason to upgrade from 12 to 13 alone because it just makes that so easy did you see how easy that was I just popped the blues and we've got this great black and white image with blues so I think that's a really really great option I don't know if you can hear that but I'm staying at my sister's house and she has twin two-year-olds the terrible twos and they're constantly constantly making noise so I'm sorry if you're hearing that in the background I can't control it um, yeah so anyway let's go back if you want to undo that edit change the blues say you just want this red from her uh, her necklace there you can just click on the reds and it does all the work for you so you got that red popping and everything else is black and white you can also do say if you want greens you can just click green up here and it will remove everything but the greens obviously in this image there wasn't a lot of green so yellow and I'm getting a bit carried away, but as you can see, it's very cool. You get all these yellows here, you get the yellow there, and you didn't have to do any work. That's the absolute best part of this edit. So one last change is uh, a fairly cool one. This is called Photo Merge Compose. And basically, if you weren't at a certain scene and you want to be in a photo or you want to put yourself next to a celebrity or you want to do something like that, um, that this is how you can do it very easily with a bit of a guided edit to do that. Um, so for example, this is my sister's wedding in the Dominican um, and the screaming babies in the background, this is the cause of that. This caused the screaming babies, this wedding, I'm sure of it. So anyways, um, for example, if I wanted to take myself out of this image or put myself into another one, I can do it very simply by going to enhance, photo merge, photo merge compose, and then it'll say drag and drop the source. You basically like any guided edit, you just follow the um, instructions up here. So we're going to take a quick selection. It'll tell you drag over the area you need included. So we're going to drag over myself. And like that. And of course you can refine it by zooming in and stuff like that. And I'll just do it quick, but it's not really that important that I do it at all. Um, because I'm just showing you how it's done, not how to do it perfectly, I guess. You hit next, and my slow computer will slowly drag us to the next panel. And then you see myself here. So if I want to put myself over my dad's shoulder, like that, where it looks funny there. It looks funny anywhere in this image. <laughs> Let's put myself back here and put myself back here and I'm there and then you can do all these different things um, to move yourself into the background, to soften things up, to add your foot there or to block your foot and I'm not going to take you through all that but if you want to do that it will do that. It will also do things like auto match your color in case your white balance is different in certain images which is great. Uh, means you don't have to do all that editing to, to even things out. And yeah, so I'm now in this photo. If I wanted to really be in this photo to make it cleaner, I could clean that up really, really, really easily. But I don't really have the time and this video is already dragging on for a long time. Anyways, I think that's it for the show today. If you're one of those people that's trying to decide if you should buy or upgrade to Photoshop Elements 13, or you're also considering the new photography plan by Photoshop, which is Photoshop CC, as well as Lightroom for $9.99 a month. You can click on me right now. I have a video that explains the two programs and which one you should go with. Um, I believe both programs have their benefits um, to you, depending on what style of photographer, depending on what style of photo editor you are. So click on me now if you want to see that video. I also want to remind you to subscribe to this channel. I've got lots of really cool stuff coming up. I'm heading to Alberta on the Via Rail, which is like a three or four day train ride. So there'll be a video from there. There's also going to be videos from 
the, the west of Canada, we're going to Banff National Park and Jasper National Park and around Calgary in that area. So it should be really cool out west. That's my homeland. So it should be fun out there seeing some familiar sights for a change. Um, what else? What else? Oh, the, the contest, the giveaway. I almost forgot about the contest. Um, we have the contest, the giveaway, as I mentioned. I'm giving away a couple, co uh, a couple copies of Photoshop Elements 13 on my website. So if you want to enter to win, you can click on me right now and it'll take you to my website and to the article uh, that I keep talking about, which will um, give you the chance to win a couple of these copies for the, the Photoshop Elements 13 as I'm babbling a little bit and I have no idea why. I'm probably just excited about the giveaway. Anyways, to enter that contest, scroll down through the post about the contest and you'll find a raffle copter widget and in there there's some tasks you need to complete to get entries into the contest. The tasks are simple like following me on Twitter, following me on Facebook, following Photoshop Elements on Facebook, stuff like that. Very simple tasks. For every task you complete you get more entries into the raffle and then in one week's time I'll be drawing the names from the raffle and announcing the winners right over there on brendansadventures.com. Anyways, that's it for me. I'm losing my voice again as I talk way too much. Way too much. I wish you guys could stop me from talking so much. Anyways, I'm out. That's it for the show. That's it for Brendan Vance and Travel Photography. Lots more to come, so stay tuned, stay, stay subscribed, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.